Hey, what's up, everybody? I just received the newsletter from Marc Louvian. Uh, salut, Marc, si tu regardes ça. About design tips to make your headlines look better. So I thought I would show you how to do all of these things uh, with Tailwind CSS if you happen to use Tailwind. Let's dive in. All right, so I have this starting point where I have created the same headline and then lorem ipsum some text, and we'll go through the transformation one by one. All right, so first, make it big. So you can see uh, this is a little bit too small and Mark recommends a sweet spot between 36 to 60 pixels, assuming the font size for the body is 16. So let's see how it translates in Tailwind. Right now, the headline is using 4XL, which is uh, 36. So we are at the bottom of that range suggested. So let's see what 5, 6, 7XL looks like. And so, yeah, I think here 5XL looks pretty good. Moving on to the next one, make it bold. So you can see here a font weight 500, and this one is 900. Mark recommends 700 to 900, which I tend to agree. And here we have the 500 font weight. So in Tailwind, font dash lets you access font weight, and you can see the thin, uh, extra light, light, normal, all the way to uh, extra bold and black. So black is a little bit too much. Maybe here I'll go with 800 extra bold. Moving on, the next tip is about the line height and also letter spacing or tracking. The bigger the headline, usually the smaller the line height and the more compact the letters are together, the better it looks. So here we're in luck because Tailwind already bakes in that concept of smaller line height. You can see here it's line height one. And just to show you what it would look like with a bigger line height here, I'll pass an inline. Let's go with snug. And obviously that looks a little bit silly and this is why you want to reduce the line height. Now for the letter spacing, currently I don't have any specific letter spacing set, but you can use the tracking utilities and you can see that making it a little bit smaller with tight or even tighter. Yeah, let's go with tight here. Makes it look much nicer. Moving on, next we have the concept of not having like a very short second finish line, like a, almost like orphans or just two words. You can see this big difference between here and there, or this one just stretches too long. And it makes sense to have a shorter and balanced headline. So let's look at how we can do that in Tailwind. <laughs> Ironically, this actually works really well as is, but I will change the max width here on the headline. I will remove the max width LG. And now when I increase the space, you can see that the problem here happens. So of course you could play with the width of your headline, but then depending on the length of the text, this is going to break again. So instead we're going to use the text wrap CSS property. So check this out, text dash in Tailwind has now new utilities for text balance and text pretty. So text pretty will always make sure that there is no orphans. It will at least append a second word to the last line. But I think here the text wrap balance for headline is always gonna make sure that the lines are equally balanced and look nice. So let's use that. And let me show you that if I add some content, it will always end up balanced. And here I'll reduce once again the line width, the width with max width MD, or maybe LG. And let me remove the text balance so you can see that it really tries, let me bring it back in to have every line balance. Okay, I'll remove the extra text and remove the max width LG and we're good to go here. All right, what do we have next? Make it pop. <laughs> You've all heard a client ask you that request, right? So here to make it pop, we're not going to change the color of certain words because it's going to distract from the readability. So instead here, we're going to use an underlined color or this inverted background effect. So let's try to do both with Tailwind. Let me scoot the separator back here to have a bit more space. So the first thing I'll do is wrap these two words in a span and we'll add some classes. So remember, we don't want to do something like text ember 300 or at least that's what Mark's recommending. And instead we want uh, to try maybe have an underline of that color. Underline, and then what is it called? Decoration, I believe, yeah. So let's try Ember 500 maybe. And then to achieve the dashed line, I think I can do decoration dashed, dashed, like so. 
And finally, we can separate it a little bit lower from the text with underline offset, yes. Uh, and we'll go with four or eight. Let's go with four here. All right, so that would be one option, like you can see here. I do like this font a lot more though. And so let's try to do this fancy inverted background that has a slight rotation as well. So there's a few ways we could go about it. We could have an absolutely positioned pseudo element that is occupying the whole relative parent and then rotated, or we could have nested elements uh, inside another. I think I'll go with the nested elements here. So let's wrap our wording in another span and let me close that and I'll break the line here just to see a little bit clearer. And I don't know if it's a good idea, but we could possibly rotate the parent and then rotate the child inside the other way to kind of make it straight again to create that offset. Let's try that and we might look at something else later. So BG black, and then we'll make the other span here text white. Uh, we'll add a tiny bit of padding left and right on the parent here. So PX1, let's go PX2, yeah. And so here's what I wanted to try on the parent. I will go minus, rotate, uh, let's go one. Oh, and I need to set the display to inline block or flex for it to work. Let's go inline block. <laughs> stop, stop. And we just have a little intervention because this guy has been barking like crazy. Huh? He's a little guest for a week. So as I was saying, the idea is to now rotate the text itself the other way and see what it looks like. So we have rotate minus one on the parent. So here we're gonna go rotate. And again, I think we need to do inline block. And it sort of work, does it work? Yeah, I think it looks straight. <laughs> Let me change to rotate minus two and then rotate plus two. So yeah, the effect works and it looked better with one, so I'll go back to one. But maybe another way I'd go about it is to have the background be absolutely positioned and then rotate so the text is never rotated and then counter rotated, it's just the background uh, that is rotated. So maybe let's try that. I will get rid of the rotate one and minus one. And I can, I think, also move the inline box off. So I'll make the parent relative. And then here, let's have another span which could be also a pseudo element. And so here, this one is going to have a position of absolute and then inset zero to use the whole space. I will move the background color to the actual element here. And now to make this thing come back on top, we need to change the stacking context. And I could use position relative, but I can also use the isolation isolate property, which creates the new stacking context without a side effect. All right, so now this decorative stuff, uh, I don't think it matters because it doesn't have content inside of it, but we can give it a area hidden attribute. So it gets ignored by screen readers. And now we are going to rotate this by minus, rotate. And as you can see, it rotates independently and we never have to worry about uh, the child having to be counter rotated. So I think that is a slightly better approach. Quick note here, this is a pretty drastic effect. And as Mark suggests, maybe keeps that to one hand line. Don't just go crazy with it everywhere. So that brings us to the last tip. You don't want to keep your font size super big and then it just squishes on multiple lines. So change the font size at different screen sizes. In that case here, uh, let me go back to the normal heading without the fancy effect. So in that case, when it gets small like this, instead of having this uh, brutally real estate space consuming heading, instead of having text 5XL, we can maybe do that from the MD breakpoint and we'll have a base font size of text. Yeah, maybe something like 3XL. And so we might have an in-between change as well, but at least now when we grow to the MD breakpoint, that's when it grows. I think here it should be a bit bigger. So maybe between the base and MD, so at the small breakpoint, we can go text for Excel. And now we have this nice incremental heading that grows progressively up to the end. And you can see we still have that problem of the heading being too long. So maybe let's go with a max width MD. So that sort of looks all right. But here it's a little bit too small. So maybe max width LG uh, is gonna work better. Yep, so that looks very nice. And of course you can go way more crazy in both ways. And there's so many other things you can do with headings, but I thought that was pretty cool to show you how to implement these tips by Mark if you're using Tailwind CSS. Hope you enjoyed this and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.